most awarded magician in history. A magician never reveals his or her it's secrets unless it's court order. David Copperfield forced to explain how a disappearing act works after a tourist who participated in that trick at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas sued the magician, claiming in 2013 he fell and suffered a brain injury. The trick, which seems to magically transport someone from one place to another, actually relies on a trap door and secret passageways to pull off the illusion. Copperfield walks the participant through the passageway to get them to the end point. According to the lawsuit, there was construction dust in that passageway, which, said, which the man says caused him to fall, leading to his injury. Copperfield says he never even heard about the fall or the injury until he was sued. Go. You were like a horse with blinders on. You said tunnel vision. Is that what you meant by that? I meant focusing tunnel vision, only thinking about the audience going through the space. Okay. The picture was clear. You weren't, you okay. weren't thinking about, you weren't noticing everything. Your peripherals weren't in use at that time. I was looking for the tape, the cup, the things, all those things that I think. I, I, I see that we are going to be doing this for a very long time because you, you just want to keep doing that. And how many times can I ask the judge to instruct you? Really? Next, next question. Judge, you move to start. Next question. <laughs> Joining me now on the story is HLN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney Joey Jackson, former prosecutor Bob Bianchi. I mean, as we look at this, so that's part of David Copperfield on the stand. It almost felt like I was watching, I, I don't know, a parody of a, of a courtroom at that point with both of them, honestly. The defense, um, I'm looking at the wrong sheet here, um, because there is no defense here with a plaintiff. As we, look, as we look at this case, does he even have a case? This guy who says he fell, David Copperfield, says he never saw anything, never knew anything until there was a lawsuit. And now he's going after this very wealthy, very well-known celebrity magician. Joey? Well, first, I'd like to make a motion to remove my colleague from this case. He does magic tricks himself. <laughs> oh, my and goodness. And since you're a magician, I believe you have a conflict of interest. That being said, let us get to the heart of the matter. Uh, the heart of the matter is that uh, I believe that the plaintiff does not uh, have a viable case. I think you believe otherwise. Is that correct, yeah, sir? Yeah, that's right, Joey. Uh, and I believe, and let, now let's look at the essential facts of the case. Apparently, what happened is, is that they're alleging, every case turns on its facts, right. and every fact must be provable in court. They're alleging that in going in an underpass that was under construction and that there was various dust, they slipped. And so the fact is, is that fa as a factual matter, there's a dispute as to whether this underpass had any dust at all or was even under construction. So oftentimes, again, turning on the facts, I want to know whether this is just a ruse to collect money or if factually this, this underpass was cluttered in such a way that would allow them to trip and fall. And if so, Bob, if it was cluttered in such a way then wouldn't it make more sense to go after the venue and as opposed to the magician? Great uh, question, and they have. They've gone after the magician, they've gone after the theater, they've gone over to, to, to the production company, and here's why the plaintiff's gonna win. Listen, you have to maintain your premises in a way that people can't be injured, especially under the law for businesses that even have a higher level to protect customers. So somebody had that material there, there's no question. There were significant injuries, and while the plaintiff is gonna win this case, they may not be able to define exactly who put the materials there or didn't, but they have an obligation not only to make observations to make sure it's safe, they're rushing people through this tunnel all that's going to happen is that the defendants the, uh, the plaintiffs is going to let the defendants sit back and point the fingers at somebody here out of all of you is responsible and they all have money and they're trying to make the case yeah. obviously that david copperfield is negligent because he didn't notice someone who allegedly fell right but here's the point i mean don't you think as a factual matter with a trick that has been done without incident over a decade where thousands and thousands of people have done this successfully that if there was something amiss like construction or dust it would have been caught and otherwise noted and that's why again and factually, you have to demonstrate to me that the underpass was in, an, in you know, a place where you could not pass safely. Don't let's just not assume that there was construction there what led to this fall. Well, we it know that there was the construction facts. there that led to the fall. The question is who we put that not. construction material there? I, I think this is pretty much coming out. I agree. If there's no construction material there and the guy just fell, still they have a duty to make sure that mm -hmm. this thing is done safely. Yeah. He right. was injured. They're going to be on. Somebody's going really, to be on the hook. Unless there's really material quickly. there and you say, oh, I slipped, and therefore let me get a recovery. And that's why. I'm I'm very skeptical. Right. Or if you're just me and you're ridiculously ungraceful and you fall no matter what. Really, <laughs> no really, such thing. really, really quickly, 
What about his demeanor on the stand? Does that hurt him? You're on his side. Does it hurt David Copperfield? I really don't. I think this attorney is browbeating him. I think this attorney is being unprofessional. There's one thing to cross-examine someone and to get at the truth. There's another thing to badger the witness. I object to his badger. I, I, I hate to say this. Being a person who has done magic my entire life, he is an icon. He is an idol. He is like Triple J, the Reese Joey Jackson of the law. <laughs> he is as a magician. And this man is really not answering the questions in a way that make him look Sympathetic. Conflict All right, of so we're going we're gonna to leave that one there because I have another one for the two okay. of you. A Tampa Bay hockey fan is hit by a puck while at a game. And listen, the pictures of the aftermath, they are painful. Sabrina Patty is now lawyering up for a potential lawsuit against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Her attorney telling local media that she was there with her family. She was on the first level of the stadium just to the end of the protective netting. The puck, though, flew over the glass, struck her in the face. So the big question, of course, does she have a case... Or is the chance of getting hit by a puck a reasonably expected risk when you buy the ticket and you go to a hockey game? Bob, you get first pick on this one. Well, first of all, the answer to that question, this has been resolved over and over again, is yes. Just like in the baseball games that were going right. on last year, not only did they, did they comply with the safety recommendations, they exceeded them. When you get these tickets, not only is it on the back of the ticket that you assume the risk, they tell you when you come into the stadium. Not to mention she's sitting in the seat and she sees the netting is not there. I feel bad for her, but legally she doesn't have a case. But I'll tell you why the lawyer brought it. This is why the American public hates lawyers. Because in the end of the day, the company has brand and reputational issues that they want to protect. They don't want to go to litigation with it. And even though it's a bad legal case, they're going to settle it just not to get hurt in the court of public opinion. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, when you go to a game, <laughs> I right? I love you too. Can I just say that for a moment? <laughs> we love you more. When you go to the game, do you really expect to look like that thereafter? Do we really assume the risk that a puck going at over 100 miles an hour by professional athletes who've been doing this since they're six, right? It should be you're assuming the risk to get hit like this? That's nonsense. The fact is, is that you do not waive your right to be safe. You do not waive your right to be enjoyed. You do not waive your right to take in a game in a very safe and constructive way and there's no way you can tell me that you go to a stadium looking one way you go back looking like another yeah, but, give her money give her money now public but, relations but or otherwise triple j unfortunately i agree give her money they will give her money but that unfortunately isn't the law people have a right to be able to enjoy these games without all these great obstructions and if you go to a place where there's not netting or these things guards or barriers are not up you are assuming the risk you gave your rights away personal injury Blaming wise, and the contract victim. wise Blaming the victim. I'm, I'm, I'm victim outraged. shaming you. Gentlemen, I'm gentlemen, outraged. gentlemen, find your happy place. <laughs> Remember, you love one another. We do. There we go. It's Triple B. Thing. Bad Bob Bianchi. Triple J. Thank Jory, you, my good Joey man. Jackson. Love you. <laughs> well played, gentlemen. Thank you both.